I would like to invite a special gentleman, a special gentleman from Germany, who is actually since a while with Lovey Lights, and he made a lot of experience with the products and understands the products very well. And he became a messenger for, for, for Lovey Lights. He became a person who is really deeply experiencing and believing in the creations of Lovey Lights and the creations from Tibor Yakabovich. And he has a special talent to, to communicate abstract things to common people like me. So when, when he, he speaks, I can understand what he's talking about. And, and, uh, and, and can recognize qualities and, and values that are behind the Lovey Lights creations in his interpretation. And I always, always appreciate that. And uh, let me give him the stage. This young man, as I said, comes from Germany. And he will share you a little bit about quantum solutions. So please warmly welcome Mr. Ludwig Reiser. Thank you. It's nice to be here in Dubai again. It's cold as usual. <laughs> Just give me a second, please. I need my presentation. Um, it's must be here. I have the great pleasure and the great job to talk a little bit about quantum physics, about the new paradigm change in the medicine and thinking world. Um, I have the possibility to show you, hopefully, a new world view. Because, um, no, let me start different. I first want to tell you how I was coming to Lovey Light. Two years ago, a friend of mine was coming to my practice and was talking about a new miracle from Hungary. And uh, when you have a praxis and you have them since some years, then every week someone is coming and shows you a new miracle from wherever. And with the time you, get, you think, okay, I've heard the most of that, I, I'm not interested. But something was different. I tried it and I said, okay, that's feeling nice. That's just a very good feeling. I didn't have any clue what it is. I had no clue what I can use it for. I had no idea about that product. But with the time I was I was playing with it. I tried to find out how it worked because I saw when I give it to my friends, to my patients, to my family, everybody was just feeling a little bit more comfortable or a lot more comfortable. It depends what the problems was. So I want to show you what kind of miracle is inside that product from Hungary, inside our Lovey Light sprays. Therefore, I have to talk about physics because I don't want to tell you something that you can't grab about waves or whatever. I want to show you scientific backgrounds. And this, the most people think physics is terrible, like mathematic. No, both is great fun. It's just a question how you watch on it. So, we will start with this sentence from a German guy, Werner Heisenberg. He's the founder of the quantum physics. More than 100 years ago, he said this very important sentence. The first clap from the glass of natural science will turn you into an atheist, but at the bottom of the glass, God is waiting for you. This is a very huge sentence. And please, I don't want to talk about religious today. I really just want to talk about physics. But physics and religious are sometimes a little bit close together. In Germany, we have the nice sentence, the doctors still believe in the physicians, but the phys physicians already believe in God. And this is true. So, there is something in the science in the world, what is more? We always think that this is just a, a computer machine, something that we can calculate. But life, we can't calculate. Health, we can't calculate. 
We can do a good stuff, we, we can give good stuff, we can give good substitutes, but there's something more. And this I want to show you today. So, but first I want to show you what is the basic thinking of our culture, of our, not just our culture in Europe, even the culture here in the whole, on the whole world. We think we have a body. Of course, everybody has a body. Everything is a body. Everything is something like a machine. And this body can produce emotions. And the medicine, we've got something like serotonin. Serotonin makes you happy. And all together can produce something that you can call the put out, the output of your brain. So the final word where I want to come to is consciousness. We think in the Newtonian worldview that we are a machine. And this machine, as much as complicated is, as much as complicated can be the, the consciousness. So, the mind is like a computer, the sum of the mechanical skills. That means that to have something like a consciousness, therefore you need a body. From the body, from the matter, the consciousness is born. Okay? This is the normal way of thinking in the Newtonian worldview. And this is the basics of everything. It's not just the basic of science, it's also the basic of medicine, it's the basic of industry, it's the basic of business, it's everywhere the basics. And the times are changing because we just in the past, we just was looking at this base, at the matter. When the people ask me, how is Lovey Light working? What stuff inside has these effects? This is the wrong question. It's like you asking, uh, no, it's, I have always a little bit the problem to translate it in English, I'm sorry. I hope my English is well enough today. So, oh, it's all, <laughs> thank you. It's always the question, who is sitting in the taxi? The question about the matter is just the question, what kind of taxi we've got? But I ask the question who is sitting inside the taxi because this is a lot more important. So the question, what is the stuff inside of Lovey Light, is the wrong question. The question is which consciousness is inside Lovey Light. So we have to start with a little bit of physics laws. The first one, um, everybody will agree with it. Nothing lives forever. Everybody will die, we also, every building will go down, every mountain will become sand. Everything is dying, okay? It's the thermodynamic law. And then we've got the second law, it's the acceptance of coincidence. Um, that means in the evolution and all the science areas, we think that the, the combination in the nature is based on coincidence. So it was just a coincidence that life was born. It's just a coincidence that the earth is like the earth is. But when you look deep enough, you find out that this construction is not really working. This both laws together we call the entropy. The entropy is the laws that everything will go down and everything has on the basement the acceptance of coincidence but it's not really working because, let me go one step back. I just want to talk a little bit about the coincidence. It's very interesting if you watch the, um, the evolution. Then you say in the evolution you have some molecules, these molecules has been come together and these molecules are combined by coincidence. And so some molecules more was coming in this nice tube of our first um, seas on this world. <sighs> Why isn't that working? It's very easy. I give you an example. Take your watch and put and put it in all the single pieces. Put all that single pieces in a box and shake it. How long you have to shake that the watch is showing the right time? you will watch your whole lifetime. 
This is one of the reasons why I'm loving mathematics, because when you use it now for the evolution, then you find out that not even one single cell can come to life by coincidence in the whole time, in the whole living or existing time of the universe. It's not working. So, the entropy is right, but not the only thing, because then our world would, would look like this. If some organism is really created by coincidence, then you need another organism who is coincidentally the same, but not female, it's male. And these are coincidentally meeting and having coincidentally fun and coincidentally a reproduction. And this coincidentally survives. It's not possible. Our world would look like this, but it doesn't. Where I'm coming from, the world is like this. It's green and it's endless, full of different expressions of life. It doesn't matter if you take the leaves, it doesn't matter if you take the ants or the fish or whatever will be here in this wood and in this water. It's so million different living forms. There must be something more who produced that. And this is a physical power. It's the so-called naked entropy. The modern astrophysic is, um, has found out that 95% of our universe are full of dark matter. Dark matter has one big problem. We can't see, we can't feel, we can't smell, we can't measure it. It's everywhere. It's going through everything. It's going through stars, through bodies, through everything. But we can't measure it. And this is 95% of the whole energy of the whole mass in our universe. This 95% is the naked entropy. And now is the question, what is it? The naked entropy is the principle of creation, of consciousness, of love, of life, of quantum physics. Um, sometimes this sounds spiritual. I think this is not spiritual and is, it is spiritual. It's both in the same moment. In the past there was just one part in our life who was thinking and working with that ground laws of universe. This was the religious, this was the different religious. So now we have um, something else, it's the physic who can explain it. The physicians should learn about from, from the spiritual people because they know sometimes a lot more than the books are telling us. So, let's go a little bit deeper. What does that mean? We have now two different physical worldviews. We have the old Newtonian physical worldview. This one is right. It's correct. I don't want to deny it. That's wrong. Because every airplane is flying and every airplane is working with Newtonian physics. This building is standing. Why? Because Newtonian physics is working. Newtonian physics is correct. So the principle of substance can have an effect on the body is correct. I don't want to deny. But there is something more. We have the quantum physics under the law of naked entropy under all these principles that we can't grab straight. And we put this both physical worldviews together and create a new world. And this is what happened right now. You have it everywhere in the world. It doesn't matter if you watch cosmetic product, it doesn't matter if you watch car industry or even the money industry. Crypto wearing is nothing else. It's, it's a paradigm change. Okay? And this we have everywhere. And I want to show you this whole world. For that we have to do some physical basics. I hope it will be interesting for you. We have here the three first laws of physical basics. The first one is the particle wave phenomenon. It's a very old experiment, even more than 100, ye 100 years old. Um, it's interesting because the particle wave phenomenon shows us that the light has a problem. It's always a particle and a wave. It's just the question, what you're asking for. The same with, with free will and destiny. This is a philosophic problem, an old and thousand years old philosophic problem. And now the physic is showing us that this problem is already solved in every matter that is existing. 
I will go deeper in that example. Let me a little bit time. I always try to repeat it so that you, that you pick up the most possible uh, because it takes a long time to understand all that in, in every direction. And I hope I have it in a combination that you can pick up the most for you. So we come to the next part. It's the discontinuity. The discontinuity is the leaping development. Before I was talking about the evolution, now we have to talk about the evolution as well because with Darwin, Charles Darwin, maybe you remember from the school time, um, he was the, the base, he has the base theory for evolution, but it's a continuous evolution and this is not right. I will come to that point later. It shows us that the evolution is leaping, it's jumping, okay? And then we've got the third part, it's the entanglement. This is the oneness. That means that everything is connected. It's interesting because this is a very old sentence that everything is connected. Every religion has it. This is what makes everything together. This is what gives everything the bigger background. And if we understand all these three laws, we come to the first, fourth one, the reverse creation of reality. Please remember before I said, we're coming up from the matter to the emotions, to the mental, to the consciousness. We're coming from the matter into the consciousness. This is Newtonian worldview. But now the quantum physics is turning it around. We're coming from the consciousness into the matter. So the consciousness is the creator of all being. And I hope we will bring it all together. So let's start with the first one. Here, this is the double slit experiment. I want to show you this. This is from you, the University of Physik in Graz in Austria. It's, I like this picture because it shows it very, very easy. And this shows very easy the problem with free will and destiny. So here we've got a light cannon. It's a ball, light ball cannon or light wave cannon, we will see. And here the light is coming out and it's going to this wall. There are two slits here, one here and one here. You see? It's coming through and hits the photosensitive area in the background. And so what we expect is that we get here two hills of light. There the light is hitting the paper. This is the particle. It's the free will. And on the other side, we've got the waveform. The waveform is coming to this wall. Imagine like you, drop, you, you throw a stone into the water, then you get your rings. Now you s throw a second stone and then you get the next rings, okay? This is this situation. The rings are coming to that wall, going through, and behind that wall, the, the rings are creating new. And they build a picture like that. We call it interference. This interference, it's the character of a wave. It's the destiny. Why? Here I show a little bit deeper. We have here the picture with this wall. The, the wave is coming through and behind this, we've got this picture of interference. Let me give you an example. When you are born in Nigeria, you didn't go to school, you didn't learn anything, you don't have money. How tall is the possibility to become an astronaut? How, it, it's, not, it's not your destiny. It's not, here's no hill where it's written on top astronaut. But when you're born in the United States or in Europe or in Dubai and you have a little bit money and you can have a good studying, then your destiny to become an astronaut will rise. So every decision you make brings you a little bit more to that, for example, to the astronaut. But when you now have the best situation, the best background, your father is a pilot or maybe astronaut or whatever, and you decide in the 10th class, no, I quit school and I do nothing anymore. Then it's your decision, it's your fixed point that you made. And this decision will always change this interference, this room of possibilities, so it will always change your destiny. 
So the free will and destiny is always connected. It's always the same, okay? So this is very important because um, we sometimes say, yeah, it's our destiny to, to do that or to do that not. Sometimes we use the destiny as excuse. And this is not really working because we can create our destiny with our free will. But there, this, we come later once again. Now we come to discontinuity. <coughs> Discontinu discontinuity is a very interesting phenomenon um, because it's everywhere and we can't see it because it's too small. When you're driving in your car, this is a continuous movement. You go further and further and further. The car is not jumping. It's not this way. It's not you're standing here and a half a second the car is there. This is not existing. The car is driving continuous, okay? But the light is different. The small particles are totally different. You have a light. Light is a wave frequency. We take here this red one. And now we want to change that frequency. So we put energy inside. As more energy we put inside, what will happen? Nothing will happen. It stays the same wave. Nothing happens. It's not becoming higher, it's not becoming longer, it's not becoming stronger. Nothing happens until one point. At that point, we have that what we call a quantum leap. The wave is jumping from that wave, from the red one to the blue one. It's going faster because it's more energy inside. But the frequency between the red one and the blue one is not existing. So we start again putting more energy inside that frequency. And of course, nothing happens. Until that point that the quantum leap is happening. But what is happening in the same moment as the quantum leap? The first wave there where we put energy inside disappears. And this is a really big problem for all scientists and all physicians because we can't imagine that matter, light is nothing, matter is nothing more than frozen light if you want it on a short wave, that this matter is disappearing. It's gone out of space. You can't find it anymore. This is an interesting problem because then the, next, the quantum leap happens and this particle, this frequency is newborn. It's restarted a new existence. So, there's one big question. When I have something, some matter, it doesn't matter which one, now we take this here and I put energy inside, then it means that all the waves, all the particles inside here are changing the character and in, this, in every moment the character is changing, the particles are disappeared. They are away. So there must be something that brings it always back in the original piece that we think that it is. And this what brings everything back in the original piece is, what a surprise, the consciousness. So then we've got the third law the entanglement. I love entanglement. Entanglement is great. Entanglement means in just one short sentence, we are just one. But in the quantum physics, it's a lot, in, it's a lot more interesting, a lot more um, spannend. Um, miss the English word, doesn't matter. Exciting, thank you. <laughs> so in the quantum physics, we watch a particle and now we have entangled particles this means brother and sister particles they are they have been connected and now we make put them in a distance and now you're just changing the spin of one particle all the particles are always moving they're not standing okay and now we change the spin of one particle and in the same moment the other particle turns the spin as well so it doesn't matter how far they are away. It doesn't matter if there is a wall between. It doesn't matter. There is no exchange of information and there is no exchange of energy. And this is amazing because that means that this particle have a kind of communication faster than light. 
You know this from your life. Um, it's really cold in here. Can't we turn down a little bit the, the, the fridge, the air condition? <laughs> we are no chickens. <laughs> so let's come back to the entanglement. Um, it doesn't matter. Entanglement you know from your life. Sometimes you think about a friend that you didn't hurt for a long time. You haven't seen him for a long, long time. And in the same moment where you are thinking about this guy, the phone is ringing. You know this? You have this experiment? Okay. Um, sorry. Hi. Sorry. Can you please turn down the, the air condition? It's really cold. Thank you. Okay, thank you. How long? You have time left. Time left. Okay. Let's change the plan once again. <laughs> Entanglement means um, we are connected in any kind of in any kind of way. So. You can even, you're sitting here now in the room. Nobody is feeling it's touching the person behind himself. But when you all close your eyes, you will feel something is there behind you. This is just because behind you is a consciousness running and so you have an entanglement. Maybe you have kids and you know this experiment, uh, you have this, ex um, not experiment, experience that some of your kids are hurt, are sick, or whatever, and you, as father or as mother, feel that something is not right. You know that? Okay. This is a very great effect because there was a time before the mobile. And so we, in this time now, we, we think we lose this possibility to feel this kind of entanglement, but that's not right. It's interesting that this, all, that, that this age that we have now, that everybody is connected via Facebook, via mobile, via uh, airplane, whatever, push the entanglement and push that feelings. It's interesting, but we still have to train it. So, but I don't want to come to psychoenergy. We stay with the quantum physics basements. Here, I show you the principle in a, in a smaller dimension, when you're watching your body, every molecule, every atom, everything is entangled in you. And if the entanglement is tall enough, then you will get a cell. And this cell is living. Why is it living? Because every molecule inside is entangled. The entanglement is necessary to have a living form. When you put all these molecules together with a, with a me mechanical way, and you don't have a great strong entanglement inside, this cell will not live. This is the reason why we can't produce life on a mechanical way. We just, we just can, we can recreate a cell, but we never will recreate life because we can't use that in this way. And then you have the cells and these cells are together connected, they are together entangled and so you get an organ and the organs are entangled and so you get a body. And then please don't stop. You have not just one human, you have a lot of millions of billions humans and they are still entangled and this is a new kind of organ in my opinion. It's the immune system of our planet. The most of us forgot this. So, we come to the next point. The world view of quantum physics. Down here we've got the Newtonian physics, we come from the physicist to the emotional to the mental area. This is shown here with this little file. <laughs> Arrow, thank you. And on top we put the Newtonian physics worldview. This is here up, we call it in the physics bliss, because we, it, it, for me it's very interesting in my university, I've, I've worked there with people from India, people from even from Dubai, from Russia, from all over the world, and there has always a different uh, religious background. And now we have to find a uh, com uh, common language. And so we create this word 
bliss. Bliss means the wholeness, the oneness, the unity. Okay? And from this unity you come to intuition to, um, down to mental area. This is um, flip chart. Not here. Okay, we do it different. Doesn't matter. I want to show you something. When you have what is um, I'm sorry, I need the right way to show you what I want to show you. From the bliss body, it's the wholeness, it's the oneness. From there, what is the first difference to th this wholeness? It's the idea. It's the birth of the I. That means that I am here and you are there. And I can feel that that's me and that's you. This is the first difference. This is the first part out of the wholeness. This is the basic to make experience. Because if we are just one, then there's no possibility to make experience. We need that distance. That distance is the birth of the idea. Now we have the idea to build a skyscraper. So, how does it work in the reality? Are we going out in the desert and there's anywhere standing a huge skyscraper and we said, great idea, we take it, we use it. No, this is not reality. We have the idea and normally then we take a paper, a sheet of paper and are drawing what we want to do. Our emotional dream. We want to build the greatest, the best, the highest skyscraper ever. And with this idea, we go and make a plan. Now we put more details inside. And with this plan, we go to our um, engineers and ask, is it possible? And they said, uh, no, this is three kilometers high. It's not, it's not realistic. It's not possible. You have to make it a little bit smaller. Then you go to your bank. And the bank said, oh, it's a nice idea to make it all in gold, but you don't have enough money. So then you come home, talk with your wife, and now you have emotional um, aspects coming in. And so sometimes from your huge skyscraper, everything what you get is just a very small house. So this is the way from the idea to your re reality, to your result. So the idea is born in consciousness and the result is that what we have created. Okay? And this is with the, with the skyscraper, it's a very easy imagination, but um, go one step further. You have a human body. There must be the idea for the body. And I don't believe that there was one time a human who, who said, mm, I don't have a body, let's create one. No, the consciousness was before. And this is what we have with the evolution. So we create from the bliss down to reality. Let me, let me come one step back to evolution. Um, yeah, evolution. We have, I give you an example. We are, we are still not ready with our evolution. So maybe it's, one, it's my private wish that the human mankind will fly at any, in any future, okay? So if this could happen, then some of you must be sitting here with a half of a wing. And this half of the wing has to produce himself, but here is nobody sitting with half of a wing. There will be just one click and a new kind of species is born, for example, with wings. And with the knowledge, with the consciousness, to use it. Even imagine your, your eye, yeah? There must be, if, if you accept, have an acceptance of the coincidence and all that stuff we was talking before, then there must be a photosense of cell, one. And this has, per coincidence, the perfect form of an optic system. And then you have this optic system with photosensitive cells and then your brain has to understand what he has to do with this information. That's unrealistic. First, you have the idea, I want to see. And from this idea, you start to create an eye. Okay? So the evolution is working. We turn it around. We're coming from the bliss into the reality. So, now for all the fans of scientists, 
we have one problem more. It's the measurable range. We can't have a measurement of the intuition or of the bliss body. Why can't we do that? It's very easy because our brain, our consciousness, our uh, filtered consciousness that we call our daily consciousness, our awareness, it's just down here, this small point. It's easier to understand if you think you are a rabbit. Can you think, can, you ha can a rabbit have the idea or a measurement out of the temperature from the sun? No, but the temperature has a, the sun has a temperature. It doesn't matter if the rabbit will think about it or not. The same with us. We have, to, we have our own borders in our consciousness. And these borders are the range of measure, measurable range. Okay? So we always will have a space in our science where we will have no measurement. Okay? This is... Um, yeah, this gives the scientists the, the, the power to find the new aspects. So... I want to show you them both, just once again, that you can keep it as much as possible. In the Newtonian physics, we have the acceptance of coincidence. I think we talked about enough about that. In the quantum physics, we've got the entanglement, the all unity. It's a p opposition, because the coincidence is the separation. There, something happens, and uh, there's no effect on me. But in the quantum physics, I said, okay, there is something happened, and there's always an effect on me. In the Newtonian physics, you have the co uh, continuous development, and in the quantum physics, a leaping development. For me, that's, I, I love that point, because in the, there's a lot of talking about the quantum leap in our society, in our consciousness. Um, this is real. This is evolution. This happens really right now, and we will all join that. Isn't it great? And then we've got the next one, the di uh, this interaction, nothing lasts forever, yeah, and the desire of creation. The desire of creation is something that, I was not talking so much about it, but it's, it's great. This desire to create is in everything. It doesn't matter if we're talking about a plant, the plant needs another plant to reproduce. We have it in the humans, the humans, always looking for someone for the better par half, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you have even that in, in atoms. In the smallest particles, they never want to be alone. They're always looking for creation, for evolution. And then we have in the Newtonian physics, consciousness is the result of the sum uh, of all components. This is not wrong. It's not the whole truth, but it's not wrong. It's very easy to understand. Without a brain, you will not think. Or? So you need this as well. But before, you need your consciousness to create your computer that you can use it. And on the other side, in the, qu oops, in the quantum physics, we have the continu um, consciousness is the source of all being. This, in my opinion, is one of the most important sentences <coughs> overall. So, the concept of this worldview, we are the creator of our reality by consciousness. We are responsibility for this reality which we call ourselves and our world. And the last sentence for me is the most <coughs> important one. Health and peace are both proof of supported self-responsibility. Sometimes this is a very heavy sentence. If my patients come to me in my practice and they've got something like cancer or burnout or borreliosis or whatever, they said, I didn't create it. That's true. They didn't create it to become sick. Some of them do it really. They create it conscious, with awareness. But the most of them don't do it with, with the whole awareness. But they have done it with the way they have gone in their life. And they, they give you an example. They, a young man want to become, what's easy? He wants to play piano. He wants to become a pianist. 
but the father said, no, this is not a safe job. You have to become a banker or um, engineer, for example. So the guy said, okay, I don't play piano, I do engineer. What's happened with this guy? This is maybe safe, but he will not be happy. He will have a little breakdown. And how many of these breakdowns we have in our life? How many from this not, how many situations we have where we are not following our heart, where we have to, where we are following our minds? And this is what is our creator and what is, creates our sicknesses. So for me, it's very great to see when I watch my people who have brought through sicknesses like cancer. I can make them in two, two pieces. The one who died and the other one who survived. Where was the different? The different was not the expensive or the better treating or the better med medication for the people. The different was the changing insight. Every people who survived cancer is a total different person. He's authentic. He stands for himself and so on and so on. He has done it with the consciousness. Of course, the medicine is a very important part because it gives him support. Without air, you can't breathe. Without a chirurg, you, you will not get it out. With not, no medication, you will not get something fixed, of course. But without consciousness, you definitely will not survive. This is the only thing that is fixed. So, now we have the question, how is that consciousness working? Because we are here to talk about lovey lights. And I was just talking about physics right now. So, let's come one step closer to the products. I want to show you the toolbox of quantum physics, how this is working for us. This is, this is a human, it's light, frozen light with some wave and frequencies and whatever you want. And now we've got the first two things that has a straight effect on our body. The first thing is the information. Information we have in homeopathy, have, we have in, in herb treatments, we have them everywhere. We have them in, in meal and we have them a lot easier I take a very easy example to understand what I mean here. Information, um, it's still the mistake written. I, I correct it, doesn't matter. This means here creates not whatever they're standing. <laughs> it creates structure. Example, you have the information, tomorrow at five o'clock the airplane is going, it's leaving. This is just an information, but this information gives you structure because you know you have to be at the airport at 3 o'clock, you have to take your taxi at 1 o'clock, you have to leave your room at 12, you have to... Ba -ba 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 -ba. The whole day has one structure because of just one information. But this information alone will not handle it. You need someone who's the reflector of this information. You need a body. And therefore, we need this blueprint. It creates the body. Even that I will show you in one second a little bit deeper. This is just the overview. In my opinion, this is the most important slide of the whole speech because there's written in what has an effect on you and the whole consciousness world. So we come to the next point. Decision taken. It creates a fixum. If you're not taking a decision, you have no point where you are standing. That means if I don't take the decision to come to Dubai, and said, hmm, I don't know what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? The life will go away without me. If I don't take the, if I have a problem, if I don't take the decision to solve it, I never will solve it. If I said, yeah, I have the problems and all that stuff, meh, 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 this keeps you in a never running story, a never effective story, it's just running. You have to make a decision. I want to be successful. I want to be healthy. I want to do whatever. Take a decision. And from that point, your life can have a new power. But there's something missing. If you have a fixum, you need the opposite. Because if you're just standing, you're stucking with the time. You need something more. You need the vibrations. You need the emotions. 
Emotion is a very good example for vibrations because you have them always in the opposite. There is no fear without happiness. It's always both. It's like light. It's dark or it's lightful. It depends. It's always a vibration. It's always a changing. So this both belongs together because in the moment where you create, a way, where we take a decision, the life is going on and you have to move again. So I take the decision to fly to Dubai. So I have to go to the airport. You see? It ta a decision taken, it's always just the next impulse for the next movement, for the next vibration. Then you've got the next two pairs. The one is the polarity. It's the main power of life. Man and female. Love. This is if you want, if you have, yeah. Love is just the combination of this both. You have the polarity and the, and the, the proposed, the vocal point. Love means uh, the polarity is, is, is the distant. You are here and you have a plus and a minus. As much far they are away from each other, as higher is the energy what's inside there. So, but the, it's like a bow. But when you have just a bow and the bow is anywhere around, you will never do something with that energy. You need a vocal point. And if you have your vocal point, now the energy, now this pair is successful. So, these six aspects are all the aspects in the energetic world. It doesn't matter if we're talking about homeopathy, it doesn't matter if we're talking about whatever. These are the basics, whatever working. This is the basics of the quantum world, what has an influence on our life. Okay. No, oh, now I have to hurry up, I'm sorry. The information here. Um, you see Masura Emoto, maybe you know. It's a Japanese guy, very brilliant man. Doesn't matter. Here, the information is everywhere the same. It doesn't matter if you watch here or here or up here or there. Doesn't matter. It's always the same information. If you watch here on your blueprint on the starship, then you have here a different information than there. This um, describes the purpose, it defines the mission, it describes the room of possibilities. It's the question, what are we made for? This is the blueprint. It's a very important word because I will talk about that in one second, one more. The blueprint is more than just your gene. Your, your genes, DNA. The DNA is just a, a tool, a physical tool to, dis, to help your body to have a mechanical function. But it's not the description of what you are here for. It's not the description how you are in, inside, whoops, inside here or inside there. <laughs> the blueprint is very, very important because we always forget it. We come to this planet start, train our consciousness, but we still have a blueprint from the beginning. So we have a function what we are here for. Then we go to school, live in family, have a culture, have a, a religion, whatever. Everything has an influence on, on us and very often we lose our blueprint. We lose what we are here for. And this, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts because when I see all my patients, What's their problem with when they have cancer? What did they lost? They lost the blueprint. There's something growing what was not decided to grow here. It, it's a missing, it's a loss of the blueprint. Okay? It's the, it's the so called morphogenesis, just for the people who are interested. <laughs> then we've got the free will and the destiny. I think I jump over it because we talked enough about it. And we've got the third one, the power of attraction. I think it's also very clear what's, what, I think, what I mean with power of attraction. Where you want to come, if you take the decision to come there, if you get your focus point, then you've got the maximum of energy. So, and now, what has it done with lovey lights? It's, it's easy and it's not easy. It's easy to explain, but it's not easy to do. And Tibor Jakobovic find a way to do it. I don't know every secret, how he has done it, but I know he was very successful with that. So the first and the 
for me, the main thing that he has done with Navi Lights, he, uh, he has bring inside here the consciousness of reminds of a healthy blueprint and continues to develop. Some of the guys who are sitting here are using Lovey Lights for some years, and I'm pretty sure that everybody of them can tell you a lot of stories what, what has happened in the life, what has happened not just with the body, not just with the skin, not just with the beauty, even with the consciousness. And this we put into the box, into the bottle. The next part is creates a healthy structure to the information, harmonizing emotion, well as balancing the vibrations. <laughs> Another very easy example, you get down here on the Sake Chike Road and you're driving a little bit too fast. Then you see the nice flashlight outside. Normally in the most situations we start to get anger. So if we are not doing anything and we take this anger vibration at home, and now we've got the family and we are still angry about this flashlight, then we will bring this kind of energy at home and we will create the next problems. But if we balance that kind of vibration, we come down and we come back in our middle and so we don't push this problem more and more and more. I use it with sprays every day. When I have my patients and I'm focused on that patient, I go out and say, <laughs> go to the next. It cleans up. So we put it in the bottle. Whoops, stay. Clears and raise the focus of our own consciousness. This is a very important part. This is a very, very important part. We have, we have our way where we want to come. We have the focus in our life. What do we want to do? In my past, I said, okay, I, I'm, I'm a medicine man with full heart. I want to do nothing more than that. So I was doing my praxis over and over and over again, year by year by year. And then I was coming to Lovey Light and after two years I said, okay, I quit my praxis. I want to do something bigger. I want to do something more. I want to do something where I can reach more people than just in my praxis. And I'm pretty sure and I'm pretty sure that the most people here using it knows what I mean with clearing the focus. So also we put that in the bottle. And the last part is uh, embodied a larger idea, the idea of collective health. I have to tell you before I explain that deeply, a little story, uh, a science story. In Mexico they made um, um, a study with, with classes and they, put the, they have a class of school kids and they make them in two pieces. The one half of the class can play outside and the other half of the class has to teach mathematics, very strong. As so long as everybody can do that mathematics was, was just teached now. And after three or five days, every kid can do it. And then they changed. So they sent this class, which has, now ma has had mathematics sent out, and put the other kids inside and teach mathematics again. What happened right now? The kids learned the mathematic in just one day. The first group needs five days. Why is this happened? Because the class are all friends. They know each other. They are entangled. That means if we use something that cleans up our systems, that brings us in a better consciousness, in a better consciousness, in a better harmony, then it will have this effect on the people around us. This is one direction and the other direction is as more people are using lovey lights, as higher is the effect. And this is true and this is working. And this idea is also put it in the bottle. So now everything is inside. What are we doing now? Very easy. That's it. We're just spreading. It sounds easy, but it's, 
it is easy. With this, with this using of the products, we have always that, that we give us this kind of consciousness every day and every day and every day. And all the frequencies, all the waves, all that energy that's inside, all that stuff that's inside and has an effect, do, do this on us every day. And so it printed on and printed on and printed on. And it helps us, I, sh I read it, the stored uh, consciousness in form of energy, information, vibration, and substance gets transferred to human consciousness over and over again. Due to this, the user's physis and energy body can recover and develop. What is Lovey Light for me? It's a gift from heaven, and I, I'm not speaking about religious background. I mean it word by word, because I know that there are some frequencies inside who's coming from the so-called stardust. The stardust has the effect that the frequencies that are inside that are higher than the frequencies we found on Earth. And the physics has a very easy law. Lower frequencies are following higher frequencies. So if we use an energetic product high frequencies, we lift up our own frequencies. It's a perspective for mankind. I think it, that's really true because it's consciousness medicine. And if we use consciousness medicine, we get a better awareness about what's going on around us. And I think we as the mankind and we as the planet Earth has to do something if we want to survive. So this is really as perspective. An inspiration. What should I say, therefore? It's an inspiration. Yes, it's, it's, it's inspiration every day. It's, every day it's creating a new effect. It helps with almost every thera wellness therapy. Wellness word is missing, I'm sorry. A wonderful task, of course, not just for the people who are joining us here and bringing it around the world. For me, I've, I have the great luck to help to bring it out really around the world so I have the possibilities to fly wherever I want. <laughs> and it's for everybody of us a great um, yeah, task to bring it to our friends, to bring it out to our neighbors because it's good for us. So don't, why don't, should I share it with the other ones? And a healthy way to earn money. That's definitely true. So, the last slide here. We are together, there are no restrictions. This is a sentence from Tibor Jakobovic himself. And this is a very important sentence because it's not, we are not talking here about we will conquer the world. He was talking about yourself, about your consciousness. There is no restriction because you are not alone. We are all entangled and we can change whatever we want. And Lovey Light is a great help for that. So this is the main part of my speech. They are the first final, but I want to talk a little bit about the future, what we will do right now. Lovey Light has this great products, this great company and the great people in the background. And what we will do for the future is we want to create this is what I was talking about, the consciousness. We want to create them in movies. We want to create them in little tools that everybody can use, that everybody can understand, to do something like a birth help for this new consciousness, for this new way of living, for that what we are standing for and doing our job with that every day. So I hope you will join us on this great trip and I say thank you for listening. See you next time in Dubai. Thank you. Thank you.